welcome to Nova. I'm Jo and today I'm here to show you an absolute beginner uh, project which is an infinity scarf. So it's a long tube, it's got some twists in it and it really finishes off a plain white top or a plain jersey outfit. In today's video you'll learn how to sew a straight seam, how to finish a seam and how to close up a, a turning gap if you've made a turning gap to turn the fabric out. I'm going to work really slowly today so that if you're a beginner I'll try and tell you as much information as I can and try not to assume that you know any sewing knowledge and that you're really wanting to learn how to sew straight seams. The first thing you need to know is what fabric to choose. So this is a Minerva Visco Chalet and Chalet um, has a real drape and flop to it so that it hangs really nicely but you don't have to use this. You can use jersey if you want to learn to, to, to sew some stretched jersey or you can use a really light cotton um, but nothing too thick. If you start to go to a cotton poplin then you'll start to get sort of quite a bulk here. So you need something quite drapey and you'll need some pins and some scissors and your sewing machine. There isn't a pattern for this, it's just uh, some measurements. So let's have a look how we're going to cut out the fabric. You'll use the full width of your fabric, which is 60 inches wide. So anything that's around 57, 60 inches wide is great. And then you're going to bring the selvages together. So here are the selvages and the selvages are the manufactured edge of the fabric. You're going to bring those together because as it comes off the roll in the machine with this running down the side, this is called the length grain and there's not very much give in that. That's a really stable grain of fabric. So that's called the length grain. But what you get going across the fabric, so across the loom, has more give. So this is called the cross grain and the cross grain is a little bit more stretchy. So that if you're trying to put your top over your head, you've got a little bit more give when it twists over your head. So pin your selvages together so that they don't shift around, especially if you're using viscose. And pin down the side so that's not shifting either. So you've, you've pinned yourself a right angle here and then you can cut the final edge. I find it helpful to line this up along the edge of the table, smooth it out and then I took a measurement lots of times across. And the width you want to make it is around about 50 centimetres. So between 40 and 50 centimetres. Or if you're using an off cut from a leftover project, then you can make it fit and try it out. And if it works, that's great. And if it doesn't, um, you'll know for a next time. Okay, once you've got your rectangle of fabric, you're going to open it out and right sides together you're going to put the two raw edges together and we're going to make a seam along here it'll be a nice long seam so it's a great way to practice getting a straight seam and you can use a 1.5 seam allowance if you've that's uh, 15 millimeters or 1.5 centimeters if you're used to using that or if you just want to really learn to sew a straight seam you can sew a one centimetre seam allowance using your foot on your machine. Because this isn't uh, a garment that needs much fitting, we can change the seam allowance to whatever we want. I'm pinning with my pins horizontally. I like to do that on a straight seam because where it stabs in holds the fabric down and it sort of holds it in a little bit each side as well. We need to leave a gap, so you need to be able to turn it inside out. So I'm going to pin the end. I probably want it about 30 centimetres away from the end. So I'll do it just a ruler's length there. And a good way to make sure that you don't sew over the gap is to put two pins in and that will remind you that you're doing something slightly unusual. Okay. 
before you start to sew you're going to put the foot down putting the foot against the edges the raw edges use your hand wheel to put the needle in before you use the foot pedal because that just stops it shooting the threads down into the foot plate and we're going to back tack and back tack these two stitches forward and two stitches back and then gently sew with a straight stitch so look on your pictures where there's a straight stitch run the edge of your foot against the raw edges of the fabric and rather than watch the needle watch the edge of the foot I'm coming up to the now I want to cut my threads I'm going forwards and back now make sure you leave plenty of tails at the back because if you cut off short tails next time you start they'll scoop down into the foot plate and repeat so start again using that back tap and you need to do that all the time it becomes a little bit of a habit keep your threads tidy so because you've back tapped you could snip those off it's always good to have a little pair of scissors by your sewing machine because if you start cutting with dressmaking scissors you're concentrating on the cut bit of the scissors and then you're not really looking what's happening to the tips that are further along and that's when you snip your fabric accidentally so trim off your threads. If you're getting a bit of fraying, which you might get on um, viscose, then I'll show you how to finish the seam. Finishing a seam means stopping the raw edges from fraying. And we're going to use a zigzag stitch here. So it's the same skills. So I've put my machine on a zigzag stitch, I've chosen one, you can choose one on your dial or choose one off your um, stitch selection. Do a forwards and back stitch and zigzag within the seam allowance and you can put both together because it's going to be on the inside of a scarf. Make sure though that you don't go across your opening space, just stop at one end start again at the other. Trim the threads. So now you should have a finished seam. That's your seam that's zigzagged and that will stop that from fraying anymore. And your stitch line seam which is a straight stitch. So now we can work out how to turn it out and put the twists in. Is the tube we made. I'm going to put my hand through all the way to the other end where the seam is. I'm going to pinch the seam and sort of fold the tube in half. So now I have two right sides together again. I'm going to put a temporary pin in there and the rest of those two circles will meet up and you'll have a complete tube. Now you can sew that now if you want to and you will have um, a tube that you twist around your neck but it, it'll, it won't have the twists within it. So if we want to add the twists then we need to twist the fabric. So the first thing we're going to do is, opposite the seam is to just snip the fabric within the seam allowance on the outer circle. So on the outer circle, I'm just going to mark it or you can put a piece of chalk or you can put a little bit of felt pen, it really doesn't matter. And now I'm going to take that temporary pin out and we're going to twist this tube on the inside. So I'm going to take that seam allowance 
round to the halfway point that I just marked with a snip and twist the fabric. Then I'm going to take the seam back round to where it started and just release that twist. And I probably need to have taken the seam past, this one's got three twists on, so I've done one twist. You can do it all the way around in one go if you want. It's just a bit, the halfway seam is just a bit of a safety point if you let go of it or something. Two. Take the inside tube and move it around the outside tube and then release the twist. It's just a bit harder to release the twist. And now you can see I've got inside there, it's twisted on this outer shell. This time I'm going to pin differently. So when I was doing a straight seam, I put my pins in horizontally, but this time, because I'm going to sew inside a tube shape, I'm going to put my pins vertically. And you see people do it different ways but if I'm sewing inside a tube I want the edges so that the glass heads are touching me not the edges of the ends of the pin scratching me so then you pin round the circle matching up the raw edges and this is where you're going to join the, it into a tube of course You'll be able to turn it out through the gap that you made here in a moment. Back to straight stitch and back to our back tacking at the beginning and the end. If you try and get a circle under the machine, you sometimes sew the back. So there's a couple of things you can do. If your circumference fits over your machine arm, can take your extension table off that works or you can sew it's sort of counterintuitive but you can sew from the inside of the circle and then you can keep all of the other side of the circle out of the way so I'm going to actually sew it on there because it looks like I can keep that really steady I'm going to go forwards Back. And with my pins facing to the right, I can have my pin dish on the right and I can keep sewing smoothly. into that hole make sure you make it nice and big because you don't want to be struggling with it and now you have your twisted scarf and it's already here you can see in here it's already got the twists in it the last thing to do is just sew up the opening and it depends what fabric you've got here and it depends on your skill. You can hand sew this, so just use some tiny stitches. You could use a mattress stitch or a ladder stitch, that would be really invisible. Or if you've got really busy fabric like mine, you can sew it on the machine really, really close to the edge, which is what I'm going to do. I've folded that seam allowance in so I know I'm catching both sides. And then I'm going to sew across there on the machine. It's just really close to the edge. And it just closes it up. So now I can snip those threads off because I went forwards and back. And 
the scarf is finished. So here it is finished. It's got that sort of natural twist in it. It's a lovely fabric to do it with, uh, our chalet, because it's so soft and I haven't got anything on the back of my neck here. This top's got a tie top, but it's really, really nice and soft. So it looks really, really natural. It's a fabulous way of trying out some fabric. So if you've not used our chalet before and you don't know whether you've um, got the skill level to cut it out or um, you know, have the right scissors or your machine will be able to sew it, then get half a metre, have a try. It's a really good way of just practising using a different fabric. Maybe once you've sewn an infinity scarf, you might think, OK, well, I really would like to choose that for a different dress. So hopefully I've given you a beginner's guide to an infinity scarf and you can make them for everybody in your family. Uh, men's ones are quite good if you make them in um, a jersey and you can reduce the width a little bit so you get more of a sort of a winter scarf if somebody cycles to work or so you can get them like as a shorter neck but you can't do that with a woven fabric because you can't get it over your head so if you want it to be tighter then you can use a stretch fabric but you just need that little bit of drape to get it over your head if you've enjoyed today then do come back for more learn to sew tutorials um, you can check out all of our website by going to www.minerva.com and we would love you to make an account and share your makes with us and have a look at the inspirational things that other people in our community are making. Do come back again soon. Bye bye.